we take responsibility on ourselves and and magnify it. We have, we if we're not careful, we take on the complex of the Superman. People look to leaders and we want them to be on a pedestal above us doing better than we are. They're more spiritual than we are. When the reality is, I learned that the superhero Superman who could leap over buildings that bat, bullets would bounce off of his chest when some when he got in a fight with someone he always ducked that simply means that he was human and we do not permit ourselves to be human when we are under authority we must understand we are not the authority but we are under the authority of god we say the buck stops with the leader i disagree with that the buck stops with god because all authority has been released by him and to us you know, Glenn, as I'm hearing you talk, I keep coming back to this, and I didn't even intention, I think it's by way of the Holy Spirit about the importance of having spiritual fathers in our lives. Um, a lot of the things, the moral failures that we see in the church and the pulpit and leadership, we take a look at, I, I've heard of the stories of pastors and preachers that are constantly drinking themselves asleep, doing lines of cocaine. We see it in the news, all these things happening. I think there's a void of have, needing a spiritual father and the importance of spiritual fathers and being under authority. And so one of the things I'd like to ask you is, how do we, how does your book show us to, to be able to walk with integrity and walk in leadership so we don't have to make these major, major errors and have these shortcomings that it's hard to recover from? The first thing we have to recognize if we have, our fa have failures is that we must repent, be restored, and be reconciled. Uh, I have discovered, according to Christianity Today, that a survey of 40% of evangelical Protestant leaders in the United States struggle with porn. And whether it be an addiction to drugs or alcohol or gambling or stealing or porn, there is a common boundary between all of them, and that is creates impulsive actions and people get there by losing their focus and falling out of relationship with the Lord and the ways that we're going to prevent ourselves from getting into a place of embarrassing ourselves publicly is we are going to surround ourselves by the right people yeah. the key people that are in our inner circle that we can be accountable to and transparent to that we confess our weaknesses, our temptations, our sins, our personal needs, and trust them that they will become intercessors for us. So it is important for us to uh, put ourselves in a place of constant accountability, to be transparent, to be authentic. Mm. This book, I believe, will help us to bring structure to prevention of, of uh, way of these temptations uh, getting a root in our life that we find ourselves publicly embarrassed over. Yeah. Glenn, what I feel like is sharing is so, so important because we hear so often of like leaders falling and all these things that are going on and all the shame that they're holding on to. And you know, one thing Glenn, just even with this topic, it just reminds me that I feel like in the culture and society, I know even something that I was like growing up and just seeing like, you know, family and just different things. I was like, you keep your business, your personal life, and your, you know, your work life, it's separate. But what I hear you saying is like, you need to merge the two and just like, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive, but they're, they're mm -hmm. one. Is that what you're speaking to? Indeed, whether it's business or church, we have to blend what we are is who we are everywhere we are. It's not putting on a front. It's not living uh, to satisfy what people's expectations are of us. It is living in our skin, knowing who we are in God, realizing that we are human, and submitting ourselves to others that will speak into our life. If people keep speaking to us something that is repeated, the chances are it's true, and we need to uh, address that issue in our life. We mentioned how people fall into sin, and I believe one of the greatest um aspects of leaders falling is the issue of pride mm. and pride will always bring us down it's the it's the main issue behind every sin we ever commit because it's all about me and when a person has success it's very easy for it to go to their head whether it's a pastor or a ceo 
a successful business person, it's easy to get to a place that we don't need God. We just live the life based on uh, the way that we have established ourselves instead of staying in humility before God and realizing we're nothing without him. Amen. You know, one of the things I've realized when I was growing up, I'll call myself when I was a young Padawan, uh, trying to be a Jedi Knight, you know, type thing. And I remember <laughs> my spiritual father, which I'm so thankful for. I have spiritual fathers in my life that I submit my life to, that I'm open to. They have kept me in so many ways. It's amazing how they speak from a level, Glenn, that we are not privy to yet. And so a lot of times you can tell when you're really with a spiritual father because they're speaking things to you that almost like you're looking at them like they have a third eye or something. What do you tell people, we only got a couple of minutes left, but what do you tell people that are struggling with submission to authority? They're struggling with submitting to a leader, whether it's because of a character issue, whether it's because they don't understand them. How should they submit? Should they just say, no, I'm not going to listen? Or are, do we blindfully submit? What would be your wisdom concerning that? If we put someone as a spiritual father in front of us, that means that we trust their wisdom and their life experience. If I have a spiritual father and I am a son, it is my decision to submit to the spiritual authority that God has placed over me. What brought down Gehazi was the fact that he was a spiritual son being raised by a powerful man of God by the name of Elijah. And, uh, or Elisha, rather. And when Elisha gave him an instruction, he disobeyed it. He, he surrendered his future anointing and the future influence he could have had being the successor to Elisha because that he went after Naaman. So we have to exercise the act of our will by submitting to authority. And when we submit to authority, what is in the life of that person is poured into us and through us and will magnify us beyond our visible faults that everyone is aware of. Amen. Well, Glenn, if people want to get in contact with you and want to know more about your ministry, we're going to put up a link and all of that to be able to get your book. But how can they get in contact with you and find more of your ministry and be able to receive from you? They can go to glendorsey.org or they can go to Glenn Dorsey Ministries on Facebook. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bulletproof Leader. You need to get your hands on this book. I believe it is so vital for this day and for this hour. We need spiritual fathers. We need to learn. We need to grow. We need to develop. And that's the only way we can do it is by getting information that we've never had. Glenn, thank you so much for joining with us. We so appreciate your ministry. Thank you so much for having me. Amen.